Adrian Madden, Kylie Bolton, and Sherry Lee Neal. Adrian is the coalition manager for the Canadian Colleges for a Resilient Recovery, a coalition of 14 leading colleges, CEGEPs, institutes, and polytechnics from across Canada working to advance the transition to a clean economy. Focusing on the areas of curriculum, applied research, and inclusion. Kylie leads Seneca Polytechnic's Center for Executive and Professional Learning and oversees executive certificates and micro-credentials at Seneca Polytechnic. Sherry Lee is an avid property enthusiast, environmentalist, and lifelong learner whose career has spanned mapping and astronomy and her qualifications include an MBA and an MSc in Geographic Information Systems. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you to eCampus Ontario uh, for having us here today. Today you'll be hearing from myself, Kylie and Sherry Lee about our involvement with micro-credentials and primarily those run through Quick Train Canada. Quick Train Canada is a platform powered by the Canadian Colleges for Resilient Recovery or rather C2R2. For those of you who haven't heard of C2R2 before, oh, I don't know where I'm supposed to point this. Not quite sure how to change the slides up here. <laughs> the clicker isn't working. If we could go to the next slide. And then the next one. Perfect, thank you, sorry about that. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of C2R2 before, it's a coalition of leading colleges, SAGEPs, and polytechnics from across Canada. Collectively, the coalition has been operating since 2020 and has three key goals to quickly provide the skills needed to support an energy transition as Canada moves towards a clean economy, to develop collaborative research opportunities amongst institutions with complementary expertise, and to create inclusive opportunities that foster an equitable workforce. Next slide. The coalition has 14 members from coast to coast to coast, representing almost every province and territory in Canada. Mohawk College in Hamilton, Ontario acts as the coordinating secretariat for the coalition, but it's not the on only Ontario member. In Ontario, we also have Seneca Polytechnic, Algonquin College as C2R2 members, and then Humber College has participated as a delivery partner as part of Quick Train Canada. Next slide. In early 2022, RBC reported that 3.1 million Canadian jobs, or rather 15% of the labour force, will be disrupted over the next 10 years as the country transitions towards a net zero economy and seeks to achieve the ambitious goals that were set out by the federal government. C2R2 saw this and felt that we could help address the training required to support that shift. In November 2022, with support from Employment and Social Development Canada, or ESDC, C2R2 received funding as part of the Sectoral Workforce Solutions Program. With tight timelines, C2R2 set out to achieve an ambitious goal of reaching 10,000 learners in Canada through the development and deployment of 80 micro-credentials. The micro-credentials would target six key areas that are key for the transition to a clean economy, including agriculture and agri-food, clean tech, construction, natural resources and the environment, transportation and industry development. Industry development included micro-credentials applicable to any sector, not specific to a certain area. Parameters were identified for the micro-credentials and mechanisms were put in place to understand the offerings that each institution could deploy. To make an immediate impact and mobilize quickly, the coalition looked internally to assess existing micro-credentials that were already aligned to these key sectors. Next slide. Only a few months later, in early 2023, Quick Train Canada was officially launched, offering fully funded upskilling opportunities to learners. Throughout the project, calls for micro-credential development were opened up to the coalition. Submissions for micro-credentials would be submitted, developed, reviewed, approved, and funded. 
and following each call for micro-credentials, training gaps were assessed and communicated for the subsequent call. This enabled pathways for new content to be developed and offered regularly through Quick Train while remaining relevant to training needs. Learners would visit the site, find any offerings of interest, considering factors such as length, modality, format, location, uh, and register with the respective institution to begin that training. Micro-credentials varied in their length of 15 hours, as short as 15 hours, up to 16 weeks, and some were in-person, hybrid, or online, both asynchronous and synchronous. Also, in many situations, micro-credentials were developed or shared through partnerships with C2R2 member institutions. For example, there was a hydrogen awareness micro-credential that was co-developed and delivered in collaboration with five different institutions from across Canada. Another example would be an electric vehicle service and maintenance micro-credential that came out of BCIT, British Columbia Institute of Technology, uh, that was shared with institutions across Canada to enable rapid deployment and avoid the recreation of in-need training that already existed. Next slide. We are very proud to say that with only about a year of operation, uh, C2R2 has well surpassed its goals for Quick Train. As of February 2024, so right now, uh, we have developed and or delivered 170 micro-credentials. That's more than double our original target that we had set out. It, the micro-credentials span the key sector areas, and we have experienced over 17,000 enrollments in those micro-credentials. Most learners accessing the micro-credentials through Quick Train are over the age of 31 and have, have, are employed full-time which is a strong indicator, like we've heard today, that micro-credentials provide a flexible learning experience for those who are looking to upgrade skills while they are already in the workforce. And more than half of our learners self-identify as being a member of an equity-deserving group, which further confirms the need for accessible learning options. The success is a direct result of the hard work and determination of the C2R2 member institutions, a few of whom I know are in the room today, and their recognition of micro-credentials as an essential tool for rapid upskilling. Seneca Polytechnic, for example, has made a significant contribution to the Quick Train platform and the available offerings. I'll turn it over to Kylie to share Seneca's perspective of micro-credentials. Thank you, Adrian. It's uh, wonderful to be here today, and it's so great to see such an amazing turnout. It, I just want to start by saying it's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of the C2R2 initiative. The coalition has enabled us to support literally thousands of learners, have access to content to enable them to retool and reskill. For today, I want to share an on the ground experience of how we've supported our learners. I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about the learner perspective, then shift to give you some information about our micro-credential model at Seneca Polytechnic, and then switch gears to talk a little bit about how C2R2 funding and some amazing work from our team at Seneca enabled us to provide additional supports for our learners to help them achieve success. So as you can see on this slide, we had a range of micro-credentials that were powered by C2R2. The suite of uh, GIS, or Geographic Information Systems micro-credentials, the first five that are listed on this slide, and the Sustainable Business Fundamentals micro-credentials were already pre-developed um, by subject matter experts um, at Seneca Polytechnic. C2R2 supported these micro-credentials by uh, providing funding for learners to participate uh, free of charge. The last two micro-credentials on this list, uh, Foundations of Sustainable Event Management and Sustainable Food Supply Chain Systems, always a tongue twister, um, those two micro-credentials were both funded for the development and delivery. As you can see, the numbers are quite impressive. I think there's close to 3,000 learners that we supported. And this just speaks to the various ways in which C2R2 um, supported by providing marketing exposure through Quick Train, um, coupled with the support of our um, marketing team at Seneca. The numbers 
are impressive. I can stand up here and talk about the success and all the amazing things that we did, but I think the most powerful stories come directly from the learners who are impacted by our micro-credentials. Next slide, please. So the first um, is a summary of a quote from our sustainable food chain supply micro-credential. This learner is working full time and mentioned that the asynchronous and synchronous delivery in the evening made it possible for them to participate. The next slide. The learner talks about the industry involvement and the industry expertise and the fact that the content was directly related to the supply chain field. Um, that was the, the value add and the really key component that made their learning um, successful. The next slide and the next testimonial is from Sherry Lee Neal. And we have the honor of having uh, Sherry Lee with us today. She is a Seneca student participating in our GIS micro-credentials, and I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you, Kylie. I wasn't expecting to see that up there, but um, thanks for that. I am delighted to be here today. and. Uh, I'm not that great at speaking in public, um, but I'm gonna treat you guys like really good friends and kind of give you my testimony of my journey to this quick train program. Um, first of all, I thought it was an incredibly important innovation in education. Uh, uh, I am a lifelong learner. I enjoy learning and I also, I mean, I do study a lot as well and I have a couple of businesses that I start and stuff, and I do a lot of things that people would find very busy. But learning was one of those things that I thought I would always continue to do. At some point, I stopped my full-time work um, career, and I took some time out to have my daughter, and I have been out of the full-time workforce for about 12 years now. Um, that didn't mean that I stopped wanting to get back into the workforce, but one of the untapped sectors, I think, that exists right now is this woman, these women who have taken time off to rear a family and are trying to get back into the workforce about, you know, well, things aren't quite the same as it was before. We've given birth, things are falling apart. We now have a lot of different things to go along with it. I wouldn't say what they are. But it does become really difficult to manage, uh, balance the work life with family life. So when I saw um, this micro-credentials being advertised as part of the Quick Train program, I was actually looking at a popular social media platform at gardening posts, which I know everybody took up during COVID. And I even started a, a gardening business because that's what I do. I start businesses. And um, <laughs> at first, I, I sort of ignored it because it looked too good to be true. And if something is too good to be true, then we know, you know, it probably is. So I, and also it was Facebook. So um, I thought, I thought I'd just, uh, I'll just forget about it, but it kept coming up. And it was at a time I was reconsidering um, maybe doing something with that master's degree I've got in GIS and maybe doing something with that MBA I studied. You know, like people told me to throw them away because they're not worth anything anymore. But, you know, um, I thought, okay, I could do something. And so I did a little investigation and found out that the quick train program and specifically with Seneca Polytechnic, they were doing geospatial studies, which is what I had done. Um, what was really fascinating about it, other than the fact that it was fully funded, um, was that it was taking advantage of what my previous training had been. But geospatial sp studies specifically is, a, is something that moves on very quickly. Um, the software that we used 20 years ago no longer looks like what it does, but the concepts are the same. So I did a bit of investigation, went on to Seneca Polytechnic site, had a look and thought, oh my goodness, this thing looks real. So I signed up 
And signing up was very, very easy. I thought this had to be a ruse. This couldn't be very, it couldn't be right. The level, the detail of study inside of here was really, really special. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. So I went ahead, I, I did it. Enrollment was easy. Um, getting answers to my questions was very, very easy. I found staff to be quite accessible. And before you knew it, I had started my journey with um, Seneca Polytechnic micro-credentials and quick train. I am now doing my fourth micro-credential um, and I was slightly disappointed to see that there was no funding left for it because I am now advocating quite intensely amongst my, my friends, um, among their friends. Um, sorry. And about the, the, the funding that's available to them for different things. They're not, not necessarily GIS. Um, and that is changing, which, which is such a shame. So the reason I put, um, bear with me, I'm gonna come to my point. The reason I put property enthusiast on this is because I quickly realized I wasn't really cut out for, main, for the mainstream workforce. And I probably like developing businesses a bit more. And I also like you know doing what I like to do. So I, I um, invested in property from an early age, and I still do that, but I don't get paid. Um, I, well, I do get paid like every three to five years, so I'm not really considered um, mainstream in Kaweena. So the fully funded part of it allows me to go ahead, do the online training, because it suits me. And what, from the courses that are being offered, I, in turn, maybe not rejoining the workforce or maybe, depending on the right job, um, I'm starting my own eco-development and I get to hire people based on what I've actually learned here. So um, thank you for the micro-credential and thank you for listening to my testimony. Thank you, Sherry Lee, uh, for, for sharing and for uh, taking the time to come downtown Toronto and, and spend the day with us. We really appreciate it. So now I want to take a step back and share an overview of our micro-credential model at Seneca Polytechnic. At our institution, we offer close to 100 different micro-credentials in many different areas of focus. At Seneca, micro-credentials are defined as being between 6 and 40 hours. They're skill and competency based. They are industry endorsed, and I'll talk a little bit more about what industry endorsed means for us. Um, they involve a reflection component and are verified via a digital badge. And this aligns with our institutional focus to provide career ready and world ready graduates. Recently, over the past year, we've worked with our stakeholders across the institution to ensure consistent experiences for learners um, across uh, all aspects of the micro-credential journey, from registration to badge distribution to um, post-completion support. The next slide provides uh, a granular um, overview of our, um, our framework. So ideas for micro-credentials are brought forward by faculty, chairs, through our program advisory committee, committee meetings, um, through our industry relationships. And during that ideation phase, once there's a, a potential um, concept for a micro-credential, um, the person who is interested fills out a Microsoft form um, that goes to our micro-credential manager who's in the room. Um, and that enables us to keep all of those ideas in one spot. Um, once that uh, micro-credential idea is identified, our manager meets with the various stakeholders to discuss things like industry collaboration, labor market need, is the idea a competency-based um, idea. We also review our existing offerings to sure, ensure that there's no um, overlap and um, if the idea is deemed as viable based on all of those factors, um, we start to work on a business case. And that business case includes things like the number of hours for the micro-credential, how the industry will be involved, the delivery mode, um, compared to offerings, audience, and obviously rationale. 
our business case is reviewed by our program quality team and then proceeds through two levels of com committee approval. And we also complete um, a financial analysis, which would include things like development costs, delivery costs, and any potential software or equipment that's required for the delivery of a micro-credential. We discuss things like marketing, potential pathways between offerings, and um, delivery mode to ensure that our micro-credentials are convenient and accessible for all of the reasons that Sherry Lee mentioned. Um, time to market can be as quick as a couple of months. And for us, industry involvement ranges, um, but needs to be included in our micro-credentials, from subject matter um, expertise in developing the content, to vetting our skills and competencies to ensure that they actually um, fill a labor market need. Um, we've had industry partners co-create assessments with us, participate as guest speakers, and obviously hire our learners after the fact. So this slide that's up here, um, provides an example of our badges. So these are the GIS badges that were supported by C2R2. This was a suite of badges, so you'll see that there are five individual badges for the individual micro-credentials, and then a milestone badge for those learners who choose, but they don't have to, choose to complete all five of the micro-credentials. As many of you know, the badge is a huge motivator for our learners. We see learners proudly displaying their badge across social media platforms. And we're um, really proud, and this is through work with our ITS team, that our badges are now um, automatically triggered um, through our LMS, uh, which is Blackboard. I don't know the nitty gritty of how that happened, um, but if you're interested, you can reach out and I'll connect you with the people at, um, at our team that made that happen. Um, the meta metadata that's included in our badges includes the name of the micro-credential, a brief description, skills and competencies that, are, that um, that learner met, the final performance task, and then the reflection com component. So in the earlier presentation, when we talked about portability, um, this badge is something that the learner can take with them, and it demonstrates what they accomplished when they were doing um, the micro-credential at Seneca. Next slide. So now I just want to bring it back to C2R2 and spend a few minutes discussing um, some of the details related to our GIS micro-credentials. I'm really proud of the work that our team did to support the learners in our GIS micro-credentials. I can't take all of the credit. Um, they were on the ground having conversations with students. And because of the funding through C2R2 and this innovative approach from our team, we were able to implement extensive learner support. So the first thing that the team did was establish uh, really detailed information sessions that were held prior to the start of the micro-credentials. The info sessions provided a platform to set expectations, talk about workload, um, software requirements for participating in the micro-credentials. As Sherry Lee sort of alluded to, some of our learners had been out of school for a long period of time and were a little nervous about uh, returning um, to post-secondary. So the info session also enabled the learners to meet our team, put a face to a name, um, and the session also provided an overview of Blackboard and how to set up their accounts so that from the start of the micro-credential, they were, they were ready um, and had what they need to achieve success. The next thing that our team did was set up a virtual commons. So the GIS micro-credentials require learners to have access to specific software, and that software requires a certain processing speed um, on a laptop. Some of our learners uh, didn't have laptops with um, that kind of processing speed. So we worked really closely with C2R2 and our ITS team to identify 13 computers on campus that were set up with the necessary software for GIS, and learners were able to access remotely that um, software. All they need is any computer and Wi-Fi access. Because of this virtual learning commons, we've had over 25 learners who otherwise wouldn't have been able to participate in the micro-credential participate. Another thing that our team did was they noticed that highly motivated, highly engaged learners were not completing the final assessment for the micro-credential. 
They were attending weekly, cameras on, asking questions, um, but not completing the final component. And without the final component, they um, wouldn't have met all of their skills and competencies. So they reached out to the learners and asked, what's going on? And it was actually a success story because the learners felt like they had received everything that they, they needed. I'm, I'm ready. I can take what I learned, apply it to my job, and um, you know I have everything I need. And what we realized is that they were already taking the skills that they had learned in the micro-credential and demonstrating those skills on a project or within their, their workplace. And so our um, coordinator for IGIS worked really closely with those students to map out um, uh, prior learning recognition to identify those projects at work that were meeting the skills and competencies um, instead of making them come back and do an assessment when they were already demonstrating that they could do that. Um, and that enabled them to receive the micro-credential, earn the badge, and be able to proudly display it on their uh, social media. So another great, uh, great initiative by our team. Lastly, our manager of micro-credentials, who's here, who would rather not be identified in the crowd, um, identified that despite being successful in completing the micro-credential, many of the learners were still a little bit intimidated about either re-entering the workforce or changing their career path. So she collaborated with Seneca Works, which is our career-ready department, to develop and offer resume writing and interview skills workshops that were specific to the GIS um, field. And I think we've had um, close to 150 learners participate in those workshops over the last few terms. Next slide, please. Lastly, I just want to talk a little bit about the C2R2 National um, Curriculum Working Group. And personally, this is one of the most rewarding aspects of being a part of the coalition. This working group provided the opportunity for dialogue for stakeholders across the country. We had weekly meetings where we shared best, or not weekly, monthly meetings where we shared best practices, developed partnerships, and through this national curriculum working group, we were able to support labor market needs across the country. So one C2R2 partner, Holland College in Prince Edward Island, connected with us through this curriculum committee to offer our GIS micro-credential to local learners in, in their area. So instead of reinventing the wheel, developing new content from scratch, we've shared our, our content, they've tweaked it for um, the PEI audience and they're now offering it um, to their learners in PEI. And the same thing happened with another partner in British Columbia, Camosun. Again, local labor market need, saw that we already had a proven track record and um, developed curriculum, reached out to us and the opportunity to dialogue and connect enabled us to be able to support them. So I think now we're just gonna open it up for um, some questions. Thank you. Oh, uh, so hi, I have a question. Um, yeah. My name is Jenny Hamey. Heyman. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation. I'm curious to know um, the things that you described, those extra supports that you provided, the career services, um, the orientation, the support for those students. Are those things that, that you can make a case for moving forward for students who, who are paying for micro-credentials? I feel like that's maybe one area that, we're, that we might do better at in terms yeah. of supporting continuing education students and credential students. Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, we definitely have um, those detailed information sessions for, for all of our learners. And um, the, the workshops through Seneca Works are available to all of our micro-credential students. Hi, uh, Maggie Finney from SAS Polytech. Me too, we're part of the C2R2 and it's a fabulous program. <laughs> I think maybe, we, were we on meeting together? I we think so, yeah, yeah, together, nice to yeah. see you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what really um, 
piqued my interest was we're working with industry partners and they're doing, you know, three and four kind of sets of micro credentials, and they wanted some sort of acknowledgement that they had this, let's say, level one or whatever. And I really piqued my interest when you said you had the um, the badge when they if they chose to complete them all, then they would get this. I guess you had it gold or whatever. Yeah, milestone, yeah. Yeah, milestone badge. So, you know, I think that's wonderful, and there's a definite use for it. Did you have to go through anything specific, like uh, as far as the college goes, or is it something you just did through um, your IT program, or...? For the, for the badges, you mean? Yeah, to... to um, yeah, and, to, and it was it automatic, so that there wouldn't have to be a person to keep track of them completing the badges? Was it like self-fed um, electronically and then when they were done they, they got the badge? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, all of our micro-credentials are between s six and 40 hours. So if a micro-credential is over 40 hours or there's a, a potential idea that's over 40 hours, we talk about potentially splitting it into two micro-credentials. And then related to the badge, um, all of our learners for micro-credentials are enrolled in Blackboard. And um, through Blackboard, the badges are automatically triggered. So there's a column created um, in the Blackboard grading shell. And um, depending on the, the coding, um, the professor will go in at the end and um, code a one or a two if, if the learners have successfully completed all of the components. And then that automatically triggers the issuing of the badges. But happy to chat more offline about the, the particulars of how that happens. Yeah. We have a question from our online attendants. Uh, Ad Adrian, can you speak to the issue of how C2R2 deals with assuring the quality of your micro-credentials, given that Canada lacks a national qualifications framework? Wonderful, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so how C2R2 operates is the 14 institutions that we have as part of the coalition. They're all accredited institutions, colleges, SAGEPs, and polytechnics from across Canada. So embedded in the work that those institutions do are quality assurance processes. Um, so it might vary slightly from institution to institution, but the quality assurance Policies are embedded within within the institutions and their um, typical processes that they would operate through those institutions. As Kylie mentioned, we also have the National Curriculum Working Group, uh, which is a group that connects on sharing those best practices. So some institutions might be a bit further along in their micro-credential journey, depending on what province they're in, and this creates a forum for them to share those best practices in detail and you know, also discuss issues like quality assurance and how they can better um, uh, regulate that for their institutions and the offerings. But c 2 2 itself works you know, as the collection of the coalition and the college is a part of it, not necessarily providing those standards themselves. Also, all of the C2R2 members are um, members affiliated with CICAN, which also has uh, a micro-credential definition and framework that we point to as well as a, as a framework that can be followed. Well, hi, thanks. It was wonderful to hear about your program. I think this is for Kylie. So in terms of your uh, badges, what, pro what platform are you issuing them through? Uh, CanCred. Can, yeah. CanCred. Yeah. Interesting, okay. And then is there anything you do to verify, and given that these are online uh, and async, mostly asynchronous, or? Uh, usually a combination a of combination. asynchronous and um, okay. synchronous, I'm yeah. curious about to verifying uh, the identity of the learner that actually completes the assessments. Yeah, it hasn't come up as an issue. Uh, I'm really glad I talked about badges. I hemmed and hawed about putting that slide in, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have the next question. Hi. Um, I think it's mostly for um, the person from C2R2. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I, my name is Christina Halliday. I'm, I'm here with the Learning Experts. It's um, a business, an instructional design business. And um, I'm really interested in the access and inclusion piece around micro-credentials. And I was really... Um, I was really uh, heartened to hear your story, Sherry Lee, um, and and to, and this is sort of following on um, our last presentation too. I'm I'm very uh, I pay attention to um, uh, participation in labor trends in Canada and in other like countries, and it is the case that um, 
uh, a significant um, proportion. So we, we got the 45 to 50 percent proportion from um, our last presentation of people 45 and over are, pre are precariously and, and or unemployed. Um, so that, that's the group of people that has the hardest time getting back into the labor market. And that's true, I, I, I have not seen data in Canada, but I've seen data in the UK, New Zealand, and Australia all bears that out. It's, it's the same. And so I'm just wondering, we, we've had a lot of discussion about how industry is leading, what kinds of micro-credentials come forward, uh, but particularly from C2R2, which is a sort of a large um, conglomeration of uh, colleges across Canada, what's the discussion around access and inclusion that's driven by those groups of people, those intersectional identities that are, um, you know, less likely to be to be able to participate in employment? Um, and I was just, yeah, again reiterating the um, loving hearing from Sherry Lee. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you so much. So there are a few pieces through C2R2 that are important. Of course, access and inclusion to the micro-credentials is a priority um, through all of the work we do, whether it's through this program, through Quick Train Canada, or through any of the other projects that we operate, that that must be you know, a priority and embedded into the work that we do. Um, each of the institutions themselves, as we've heard from Kylie, have those wraparound supports that are embedded into the institution, which ensures that Again, acting as a coalition, we can learn from the strengths of others and the, um, the network that we have on the best practices in that space on how they can provide those supports. In terms of targeting workers that are currently in the workforce versus those who are not, this program was designed and targeted through its marketing efforts to look at learners who are currently in the workforce and how they can be upskilled, whether it's into a new job or just a promotion within their job or to remain relevant within their job. We heard earlier, and it's also, um, you know, a, a key area of our program around looking at the electric vehicles and service and maintenance technicians. Um, training like that would, you know, ensure that workers stay within their same job, perhaps even within their same employer, um, but that that employer remains relevant. In terms of those who are not currently in the workforce and looking at how they can get into the workforce or perhaps they're not looking to rejoin, we also, through these micro-credentials, we recognize that there's different levels of learning. You might be looking at something that's more awareness-based. We have offerings that are around um, uh, having, you know, how to the housing fundamentals and the science of a home to how to make it more efficient as we move forward. Perhaps, you know, people's heating bills or cooling bills will be rising and what can we do and know as a homeowner to improve that within your house. It's not all, not all of the micro-credentials are um, necessarily for someone going into the workforce and looking to get a new job. It might be able to be used in that way, but we also understand that there's a need for micro-credentials that are more open to anyone looking to learn new knowledge quickly and in a flexible environment where they don't need to go back into school or they can take this training at their own pace. Thank you. This is our last question. No. No. Yeah, this was our last question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.